Nepal is known for its community forestry, a successful participatory approach for forest protection and management that was formalized by law over three decades ago. Community forestry groups represent more than a third of the country's population and manage one third of its forests. Because of this, Nepal naturally takes a community-based approach to Red Plus. Since 2018, Nepal has had a national Red Plus strategy, but to implement it effectively, it needs to be adapted to local circumstances. The UN Red Program, together with Nepal's Red Plus Implementation Center and the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development, ECMOD, has supported this process through the development of sub-national Red Plus action plans, directing investment towards actions which support local livelihoods and address local drivers of deforestation, as well as national Red Plus goals. with this sub-national planning process, we identify exactly what it is at the local level that ultimately contributes to the global goal of reducing emissions from the forest and land use sector. Nepal is a vast country, spanning from the Himalayan mountains to the low-lying plains, which means notable differences in forest ecosystems and in the drivers of deforestation. Therefore, Red Plus policies and measures must be designed locally and with full involvement of local institutions and communities. The sub-national Red Plus planning process took a multi-stakeholder approach designed to help meet the objectives of Nepal's national Red Plus strategy. Throughout 2015 and 2016, a series of consultations were held to develop the first sub-national action plan for Chitwan, identifying the local hotspots, drivers of deforestation, and the actions to address them. One key action identified was the integration of agroforestry models into the business plans of four local cooperatives, allowing them to balance economic development with environmental conservation. The Milli Julie Beekeeping Cooperative was one of these. Agriculture is directly dependent on forestry sector. That's why, you know, the forestry sector is one of the key areas where the government can invest for uh, return to the people. The key objective of the government policy is uh, people's participation. Red Action Plan, it was prepared in consultation with the local people. That's why it was popular. It's nothing new. It's just a matter of linking local actions with global, you know, uh, concerns. We found this uh, cooperative that is working with uh, bee you know, apiculture and what they do is uh, they are planting more trees, they are conserving forest, which is ideal for red. Before the Chitwan plan, monoculture banana plantations dominated here. After the planning process supported by the UN Red program, the bee farmers have started to intercrop trees that they can use both for fuel wood and to improve their honey production. With a simple and relatively cheap solution, bee farmers have addressed the challenge of increasing production, improving food security, and increasing tree cover. Their knowledge and ideas are crucial for a successful outcome. A second key action under Chitwan's Red Plus sub-national plan is promotion of sustainable forest management in community-managed forests. Through technical training, forest users learn how to improve their livelihood and economic benefits while maintaining conservation objectives. Yes, 
The new approach encourages harvesting trees on a rotational basis so that timber and fuel wood can be produced, used, and sold sustainably by the local communities. Previously, this community was encouraged to focus just on conservation. Now they're also using the forest to improve their livelihoods, and this provides the motivation required for them to invest in effective protection and management activities. Jungle <laughs> After the Chitwan experience, the Nepali government wanted to scale up this subnational Red Plus approach in other parts of the country. Ilam, in the east of the country, is known for its thriving tea industry run by small scale farmers. Yet while the tea industry contributes to the local economy, it's also a driver of deforestation. The only way to address this is through a landscape approach, in which various actions are planned and implemented in a coordinated way, aiming at maximizing economic, social, and environmental benefits. You see this uh, tea garden, it has no trees, so this is a monoculture. There's always the danger of deforestation or conversion of forest land to plantation. So there's also the opportunity of introducing trees into this landscape so that it can be a more sustainable form of tea cultivation. We identified the need to help Nepal to measure the impact of elements of a REPLUS strategy. REPLUS is ultimately about scaling up approaches that demonstrably work. I think this, this work that we've been doing in Nepal really gets to the heart of, of relating REPLUS to the real world. The overarching policy of the government is to increase forest best benefits to people. They're contributing to the livelihood of the people. Second is uh, contributing to the enhancement, conservation and enhancement of biodiversity. And then third one is contributing to reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions. So that means contributing to uh, mitigate climate change. So these are the three overarching objectives of the government. And within that, Red Plus contribute to all those three things. In addition to being scaled up nationally in Nepal, the sub-national Red Plus approach is being adopted globally. It's already in place in India, Lao People's Democratic Republic, and Vietnam. 